in part one, we discussed some of the basics. How do you find a song that you're seeking to license? Writer, publisher information, licensee, licensor, who those parties are, and some of the basic media types that you will probably encounter in the licensing of various compositions. In part two, we're, we're going to cover the description of use, the duration of the use for the compositions that you want to license, the term, territory, and release date. First, with regard to description of use, you're going to, you're going to want to specify whether or not the use of the composition in your production is going to be visual vocal, is it background vocal, is it background instrumental, all of these things are going to make a difference because if you're visual vocal, then you might have an actor or a character singing that song, which is likely going to be more expensive than if you just have um, a background instrumental use of that song that's going to be um, just in the bed of your production moving from one scene to another. Duration is also going to be a factor um, when you look at the cost. Don't license the whole composition if you only need 10 or 15 seconds of the, of the work, <clears throat> for example. The term is going to be one of the most requested topics in this area because we're going to look at whether or not um, you need that, that term in perpetuity. You might ask yourself, what does in perpetuity mean? In perpetuity means forever, uh, forever and ever. Um, for example, most films are licensed in perpetuity because once that composition is synced to that film, it can't be taken out. However, on the other hand, um, a commercial ha will have a limited run, so a commercial might license for, you know, several weeks or several months. Um, and then once it comes down, it's not really going to be seen again after that. So you'll want to think about how long you realistically really need to license that composition for because that's going to have a great effect on how much it's going to cost you to license that composition. Next, territory. We're going to look at where, um, where the production is going to be air or aired or distributed or seen. Um, the territory is going to affect the fee. For example, if you're looking for an all-media, you know, worldwide or universe-wide um, use of a composition, that's going to cost much more than if you're looking for something very limited for local access, for example. So you're going to want to look at um, how, how big of a scope you're going to need for your production. And then last is the release date. Um, this affects the term of the agreement because it'll tell... Um, the licensee and the licensor under the contract when the term is going to commence and when to start counting um, that time from. So if your production doesn't come out for another three months or six months, then you'll want to provide um, the publishing companies with an idea of when that release date is going to be so that you can count your, your one-year term, for example, thereafter from the date of release. So I hope that this has given you a brief overview of some of the basic deal points in a film and TV contract. And uh, we will see you next time for the next episode of Lawyers Rock. Winnie Jess, signing off. Peace.